Our last video was about adding capacitors. And what we found out was that in series, capacitance measured in farads got smaller for the total capacitance because it was similar to the gap between the two plates being increased. That gap plus that gap to pull the charge across that. And in parallel, it got larger. And that's because I could store a charge here, but I'm also storing another charge here, so I'm able to store more of an electrostatic charge. Okay? Today, we're gonna add the capacitive reactances. That is the amount of opposition that a capacitor provides in an AC circuit. And we're ultimately gonna do that in order to find out how much current flows when an AC source is applied. So let's just look briefly at how does a capacitor work when an AC voltage source is applied to it? The thing about an AC voltage source is it's a sine wave. So it's going positive for a moment and then it goes negative. And that all happens in 1 60th of a second. 60 full cycles a second. And I gave it 60 hertz, just like we might get from a socket in our wall. 60 hertz on both of them. The only thing difference here and here, same size capacitors, just two of them put in series, two of them put in parallel. So at a moment that this voltage is pushing in a positive direction, the electrons are all pushed up here. So I stack all the electrons there, and the other side is positive. But then the voltage turns. Starts going the other direction. What happens? Well, all those electrons get pulled off of there and packed on this side. So what happens while this AC voltage is applied is the electrons are racing from one side to the other and then turning around and coming back, packing their bags, going back to this side again. They're just going back and forward, back and forward. So if I put an ammeter on here, would I see current flow? Well, yes, because what is current? Current is the movement of electrons. Now, the electrons are not gonna go through this part of the circuit. So you might think, well, Dave, I got an open circuit. But no, that's a dielectric. And the way a capacitor works is it takes all the electrons here, pulls them off of this side, and so it maintains an electrostatic charge. It has a charge, and then it gives up that charge when it goes the other direction. So it goes back and forward. So within the circuit, there is plenty of current flowing. We just need a formula to figure out, well, how much current? So how much opposition does that capacitor provide? Because I have volts here, I'm trying to figure out amps. Be helpful if I could figure out some ohms. And just like inductive reactance was measured in ohms, capacitive reactance will be measured in ohms. So this looks somewhat similar to the inductive reactance formula, but this is capacitive reactance. So the L has been replaced with a C and it got inversed on us. Remember I said capacitors are complementary to inductors? We're gonna be able to find out that we use capacitors to compensate for part of the current on inductive loads. We'll see how all that comes together down the road. For now, we'll figure out how they work. So let's apply our 53 microfarads. Right, last time I used whole numbers, which were unrealistically large. Mostly these are in microfarads. So 53 microfarads in one sense is written like this. That's how small it is. Not even a thousandth, right? These are millis, these are micros. Then we go on to nanos and picos. But that's how small it is. 
At the end of this video, I will, I will uh, take a couple of minutes and show you how to punch that into the calculator, the most simple way that we can do. But for now, this is how it would be written out. 2 pi times the frequency, 60 hertz, times 53 times 10 to the negative sixth. That's for the decimal point movement. Okay, and that equals 50 ohms. So each of these capacitors is worth 50 ohms of opposition, whether it's in series or parallel. They're getting hit with the same frequency. The question is now, how do ohms get added? And I'll tell you, ohms get added like you always added ohms. So in a series circuit, 50 ohms and 50 ohms add together and become 100 ohms. Now you could check this out in the formula. The total capacitance was half of the other, each one. And so if I put a smaller denominator, that would mean a larger value. So it rings true. You can punch in the numbers for practice if you want. And over here, 50 ohms and 50 ohms, product sum or reciprocal formula, or um, since they're the same value, I can just take one of them and divide by two, because there's two of them. And also you can use this formula with the total capacitance and see if you indeed come out with 25 ohms. And you should. So now can I figure my current in the circuit? Sure. I got volts and I got ohms. And even though these don't say R, I can substitute capacitive reactance because it's an ohmic value into Ohm's law. And that's why current equals E over R. So that means current is volts over ohms. And I can use Ohm's law within any section here. Total circuit values, capacitor one, capacitor two, total circuit here, capacitor one or capacitor two. Use Ohm's law within these values. And so if I take this, I'm gonna have, find I have 4.8 amps in the parallel circuit. Does that make sense? Yeah. I can double check it, 120 volts. Do I have 120 volts on this branch? 120 on this branch? Parallel circuit rules, same voltage on each branch. 120 volts, 50 ohms, 120 over 50. Sure enough, 2.4 amps, 2.4 amps, because they are both capacitive, they will add up to the 4.8. Next, we'll be getting into adding resistors and capacitors together and using our right triangles and vectors. But these are 90 degrees out of phase, as are these. So this current is in phase with this current, both of them being out of phase of the voltage. And over here, how much current am I gonna have flow? Well, it turns out the opposition was a lot greater here. 120 volts divided by 100 ohms, 1.2 amps. When I put the same two capacitors in series, they only gave me a quarter of the amperage of when I put them in parallel. And series circuit, we would know that 1.2 amps is equal in all parts of the circuit. And therefore our voltage drops would be different. Half the voltage would drop here and half the voltage here. So that's how capacitors work. The capacitors themselves add up with the opposite rules. But when we get to ohms, Ohms add up as ohms have always added up. 
Stick around for these last two or three minutes if you want to figure out how to plug these exponents into your calculator. Now this sheet here is one of your handouts. In the top half, it deals with some symbol identification for all the various components. On the lower part, we're dealing with trigonometric functions that we use uh, dealing with the angle theta. But it's this portion that we're concerned with right now, exponents. And we'll pay attention to where our decimal point is. Up to the left of it, numbers get bigger. Units, tens, hundreds, thousands or kilo, millions or mega, etc. But right now, we're focused on the real small numbers to the right of the decimal point. First three being milli to the negative three. So the assumption is that I've moved the decimal three places, and that means if I have one milli, I would put it here. 10 millis, the one would be here. 100 millis, the, uh, the one would be here to make 100 millis. And the same is with micros, nanos, picos. There's a units, a tens, and a hundreds in each section. Now we're gonna enter it into the calculator. Let's look at our formula. Capacitive reactants, X sub C, is one divided by, and notice I have parentheses around the denominator because I'm dividing by the entire quantity. So here we have it, one divided by, we'll open our parentheses, two pi times 60 times, and remember, this is capacitance measured in farads. So we have 53 microfarads, and the way that's written in farads is 53 times 10 to the negative 6 farads. Real small number. So let's enter it. As I have it written right here, we'll go 1 divided by, and I'm going to open my parentheses, 2 pi 60. Now, I could put a times in here. I don't have to. But now I need to put the times sign because I've got to separate these two numbers apart. So times 53. And now I've got to make that 53 into those little micros. So here's the way the buttons on the calculator go. Second function, double E, which is right above the 7. It's the inverse key, but the little double E in blue right up there. Push that button. Now it just shows one E here, and that's fine. And then we hit this negative but not the minus key, but this negative one here with the little parentheses around it. That key, six, close the parentheses if I want to, and hit equals. And I get 50.04 ohms. Round it to 50 ohms. Let's enter one more just to make sure we have the uh, procedure down. Okay, again, our formula, capacitive reactance, 1 divided by the full quantity, 2 pi frequency capacitance, capacitance in farads, 26 and a half microfarads, very small number, so that's 26.5 times 10 to the negative 6 farads. Let's enter it right here. 1 divided by, open the parentheses, 2 pi 60, that's my frequency, times 26.5, 26.5, and then these four buttons will be how we basically push the decimal point over six places. So second function, Double E, remember right above the seven, since we have second function pressed, it's that little blue letters, double E, and only one E prints out there, that's correct. Then this negative sign, the one here with the parentheses, and then six. Close parentheses if we want to, and hit equals, and 100. When we had 53 microfarads, we got 50 ohms. When we have a smaller, capacitance, we get larger ohms. And that's the way it works. When the denominator gets smaller, the result becomes larger.